welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Spherok TV Explains. My name is Jared, otherwise known as Blizzy B, and I'm coming at you today with a bit of a different content, which is going to be a full painting guide on the Lumineth Realm Lords from Age of Sigmar Warhammer. And today we're going to be painting the colours of Yometrica onto the High Warden from the newly released army box. So without further ado, I'm going to go through this painting guide step by step and explain the colours and the processes used in each individual step. See you in a moment. So, as you can see on our lovely little painting mat here, we have the High Warden of the Yometrica Wardens. All I've done here is base coat it in Wraithbone using the Citadel Wraithbone Spray. So, to get going, all we're going to do is start off by painting the main armor panels that you can see here on the breastplate, the pauldrons, and the side panels of the armor, and we're going to be doing that in Arctic White from Vallejo. As an alternative, you can use Corax White from Citadel. However, for this specific color scheme, I'd prefer to get a nice crisp white with it. So, one of the really, really important things is always remember to thin down your paints. Personally, I'm using a wet palette that you can't see just off of screen. And I'll be mixing the Arctic White with a one-to-one -one ratio of Lamian Medium or a alternative paint thinner. Make sure you have just enough on your brush and make sure that your paint doesn't get too close to the ferrule and then we can get going. Okay, now that we've got our first thin coat applied of the sharp white onto the main armor panels, don't forget that sometimes, especially with these kind of models, some things are going to be easy to paint in sub-assembly. And now you can see on the background here that I'm going to have the shield, the scabbard, and the banners on the top, which I'm going to paint separately, as to be able to get into the back of the armor just here. Feel free to be using any kind of brushes here that you like. Personally, I'm going to be using a mixture of Citadel and Army Painter brushes. Right now, I'm going to be using the small base brush and the medium base brush to get all of the coats applied, and then I'll be switching over to a shading brush later on in the guide. So, as you can see, potentially here, that the armor is now a slightly lighter, crisp white. Personally, I'm going to do two thin coats of this, and then we're going to move on to the armor trim. Okay, and now that we've got that crisp white finally applied in two thin coats using my Citadel small base brush, we're now going to move on to the armor details. So this is going to be things like the crest on his chest, all of the armor trim, and the underside of the armor that you can just see under here above the thigh. And we're also going to do the helmet as well. Okay, now we've got all of the gold trim done all around the model, as you can see all across the trim. The lantern I'm not too worried about spilling over right now. I'm going to be going back and filling that in with a nice bright pink later on or a bright blue. Make sure that you haven't forgotten any of the things on the crest, including the gem just here on the warden's forehead. So now the next step is that we're going to apply Skeleton Horde all over the robes, all along the base of the model and over the neck here where you can see the tunic underneath. For this, we're going to be using Skeleton Horde with a 1 to 1 ratio of contrast medium. And we're going to apply that in a nice even layer all across the base of the model, making sure to manipulate the fluid so that it doesn't settle in those recesses. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to start by applying this in a relatively even layer all over the robes and across all of the tunic on the back. Okay, now that our contrast paint's been applied in a one-to-one -one ratio, whilst it's drying, we can actually move on and do some other things, because it's very, very important when applying a contrast paint not to manipulate it. If you manipulate it, you can end up with quite a patchy finish, so it's best to just apply, leave it, and see how it goes. If it goes on a little bit too thick, you have a small window to re-manipulate it, but if it's a little bit too late, best to just leave it, come back later, and fix any damage that may have been caused. Contrast paints are a little bit of an Achilles heel when it comes to painters. 
because we're so used to manipulating liquid paints and very, very thin down paints that you feel that urge to do it again with contrast, but it's very important not to do that. So in the meantime, we can go around and start applying all of our blues. So we're going to start by doing Altaoc Blue, and we're going to be doing that on the central cloth, and we're also going to be doing that for the feathers on the helm. So let's get down to it. Okay, so once again, using our small base brush, we're going to be applying the Altaoc Blue with a 1 to 1 ratio of our medium. I'm going to be applying it in two thin coats in this instance. Okay, now that we've got our two thin layers of Altaioc Blue applied, I've, now that the shade has dried, we can actually see that there's a little bit of a patching problem that's gone on. The easiest way to fix this is to apply another very, very thin layer of Skeleton Horde, mixed one-to-one -one again with contrast medium, over the affected areas, and hopefully that shouldn't cause too much of a problem. If it does cause a problem enough where you can still see the patching issue, you can then run over it with some edge highlighting of a slightly lighter shade. Okay, so here you can see the affected areas directly on the right leg and a little bit just here on the left leg as well. This is most likely due to the ratio being ever so slightly wrong of a one-to-one. -one. Instead, it was most likely more medium than contrast. Again, the easiest way to fix that is a another very, very thin layer, just over, just like that. So with those muddy battle-worn robes completed, all we're going to do is apply a highlight of Wraithbone on some of the edges, and then we're going to go over with the blue on the area, and for that blue will be Thunderhawk. So let's start off with a nice quick edge highlight of some Wraithbone, and we're only looking for these very, very raised edges. So just on here, like on this little crease, it's a very, very thin line. Along with the fold here, we're going to go all the way down, Again, make sure you're thinning your paints just enough. Okay, and then continue this over the entire robes. Okay, so now that our edge highlighting is applied on the blue, I also noticed that I made a small error again with the cloth. So I decided to rebase it with Wraithbone and then apply another layer of contrast hoard. This is more than acceptable to do, it happens quite often that you would make a mistake or maybe the paint doesn't flow as well as you would like with contrast paints. However, now that that's done and a quick 15 minute fix, it's now time to move on to a cut final few steps, one of which is going to be the metallics and the skin tone. So for the metallics, I'm going to be using Grey Knight Steel as a base coat, and then I'm going to be shading it with Non Oil, finally with a very light dry brush or edge highlight of... Runefang Steel. Okay, so using the same method that we've been doing the entire time, we're just going to take our small or medium base brush, whichever you prefer to use in this situation. Typically a larger brush is going to be a little bit better. And you're going to apply the Grey Knight Steel directly over all of the metallics. The advantage of using this over something like Lead Belcher is that Grey Knight Steel is a very, very blue metallic. So it's going to give that really, really nice effect to it, rather than the brand new shining steel. But just follow this for all of the metallics over the entire model, including the sword, and then we'll get to the shading and to the edge highlighting. Okay, with the grey noise steel applied and the normal oil currently drying, before we get to edge light, we might as well move on and try and do the elf flesh. With elves being a little bit more fairer skin than humans, we're going to do a slightly different recipe than we would do for human skin. So, we're going to be taking contrast Gileman flesh and we're going to be taking contrast medium. And instead of the usual 1 to 1 ratio, I want 1 to 0.5, so one part medium to 0.5 of the contrast paint. And then we should be able to get a really, really nice pale effect to the skin tone. Let's have a look. 
Okay, so let's start off with the face being very, very careful not to get it on the pure white armor that we have done so far. As it's contrast, it's fine if it goes on a little bit much, simply because it's going to flow into those recesses really nice and smoothly. Don't forget to do this over all of the model, including the head, neck, hands. Okay, so with that very, very quick and dirty edge highlight done, now it's time to move on to some of the final details, which is going to be the gems, the handle for the sword, and the wood effects. So for the gems, we're going to start off with Emperor's Children, and then a highlight of Pink Horror. And for the wood, we're going to start off with a base coat of Dryad Bark. We're going to then shade it with Null Oil, and then we're going to go just back over those edges with the Dryad Bark, and then Mournfang Brown, just to help bring out those extra edges. Okay, so switching back over to your detail brush, you can now just very, very quickly just go over the gems with that nice Emperor's Pink, otherwise known as Emperor's Children. And then once this is done with the edge highlight of Pink Horror on the bottom side of the gem, we can then just cover the whole thing in Art Coat or Storm Shield, and then that will make it look a lot more like a realistic gem. Also do the same technique for the lantern. Okay, and with the wood and the gems done, now it's time for one of the final steps that I like to do, which is going to be to shade all of that gold that we did right back at the start of the video. We're going to be doing that with a nice regiment brush from Army Painter, and we're going to be doing it with Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel. And we're going to be doing this just by applying a nice even coat all throughout. Once it's dried, we'll then do another edge highlight of Retributor Armor. And then we can almost call it a day. Okay, and the same as what I've just said. We're just going to very, very quickly go over all of the gold areas with the Reichlin Flesh Shade. Being very, very careful not to spill this onto any of the other colors. As then we'll have to go back and redo them. So just pay extra attention not to spill this on any of the other paints. And with that, the final details to the model should be about done. There's just one last thing to do, which is to glue on the rear brace to his back and then to actually paint the banners. And for the banners, what we're going to do is we're going to base coat the entire thing in Cantor blue. We're then going to shade it with an contrast paint called ultramarine blue and then we're going to edge highlight once again with cantor blue and then hoeth blue okay so as you can see all i've done is apply one thin coat over the banners i'm now going to take undiluted ultramarines blue and then just apply it very very evenly once this is done one quick edge highlight and we're just about done Okay then guys, and that just about does it for our High Warden of Yometrica for the new Lumineth Realm Lords. Very, very simple, basic, and dirty tabletop plus job. If you guys would like to see things based, I may very well come back in a future video. If you want that known, just let me know down below. Okay, and with that, guys, thank you very, very much for having me over here on Spherok TV. My name is Jared, a.k.a. Blizzyby. If you want to see any other alternative forms of content, come here on Spherok TV. Feel free to let us know down in the comments below, and we'll take everything into consideration. Meanwhile, if you want to see anything else regarding my content, or even how to base this miniature, and how to make it look a little bit more professional, adding some dirt and some grass and painting those ruins, you can always find me over at twitch.tv forward slash blissyb, should be somewhere down in the description below. Again, thank you very much for Spheric TV for having me as a guest today, and I hope you guys have an amazing time discovering the secrets of Hayish. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.